Kevin, hi, and thank you for joining us for the, I think it's the seventh uh, episode of Divine Cover. So my unusual welcome may make more sense as we get into this week's topic, but before we do, some quick greetings from the Vibrate Higher team, Vanessa. <laughs> hi, heavenly hi, I love it. Okay, greetings all. I'm Vanessa. I'm a lifestyle coach for mum, mums rather, helping women to help yourself and feel more confident. And Denise. <laughs> Hi, I'm Denise Mustard, and I'm an emotional fitness coach and I help people let go of their emotional pain and take them into their power. <laughs> Just notice my... Awesome. I've been listening to this week's conversation as a continuation from last week's topic and spellings and the magic of words. So I'm going to hand it out back to our hostess with the mostest to keep us on track. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Leila. I love it. All right, so um, as usual, I'm going to have a quick uh, technical hitch as I bring up the slides. But as Layla said, we're really going to uh, extend that conversation about um, the English language and how we're using words that are actually can have double meaning. So Layla, while I bring the slides up, I'm just going to hand it back to you. Okay, well, this came up for query. Denise was like questioning, oh, you know, what words? Give me more, you know, <laughs> sort of as soon as you get and you're like, tell me, tell me what I'm saying. So sort of um, been looking into more. Now, a couple have come up. Um, they're ones I've known about and heard about, but I always forget in the usage of them. So the church often blesses people. But if you sort of break that down, it's actually telling people or instructing people to be less. So, mm, you know, is that a <laughs> and I think the same goes where you know there's been that um racial definition or cultural of people being black but if you break that down they're telling people to be lack you know is is that a consideration would the color brown be more appropriate or or a different name for origin what is the preference there again my um my greeting today was heaven high <laughs> as a counteraction to the hello we're used to, you know, <laughs> instead of having our focus down, let's focus up. <laughs> let's focus on lifting ourselves. <laughs> so there's another one. Oh my God. Layla, so, sorry, I'm just, I just need to jump in because this is why you're just so incredibly amazing, Layla, because I heard the heaven, heavenly high from you. And yesterday, as you know, I've been doing the technical things for our next workshop. And one of the things that I've managed to sort out, which is shame on me, because it could have been done ages ago, was the email address for our collective. And the way how it's set up, we literally just put in whatever we want. And I certainly will not be using that word, hello, <laughs> at Vibrate Higher. Maybe we should just put Heavenly High. Maybe it'll be too long, but yeah. <laughs> Go for it, Denise. No, I was just going to say, yeah, hello. Um, I was like, how, how bad can hello be? Hello. <laughs> Wake up today. <laughs> it's so funny because, you know, I always say grand rising and I did touch on this last time, so I'm not going to go into it again. But I've noticed that in other Telegram groups, that's catching on, not just because I put it in there, but other people are saying, come on, let's change up our language. One of the things that I wanted to say is for all of us that are in this, um, you know, whether we want to call it pro progressive movement, however we describe it, we have to appreciate we're going to unlearn everything that we have been taught. So you've just got to let go. Sometimes you will make a slip up, you know, so there's words that we're not trying to use and then we use them and we go, oh gosh, you know, we said it. But that awareness will keep coming, you know, as long as we're just kind of conscious of the things that are coming out of our mouth and just correct yourself there's no problem but later well, hi is okay hi is okay right oh yeah hi, <laughs> hi yeah. Is okay. i'm thinking hey, hi. <laughs> you know what i don't think it's even a case of what is okay or what's not once you have the conscious awareness of it i feel you can put your own intention to whatever word it is as in you claim it back and you can still use hello but use it with your own gumption and your own you know definition of what it means to you and and, and then it just has a different energy yeah, to right. it so. <laughs> totally i like that Hello. So Layla, what other words have you got for us, Layla? Because I, I know you've been, <laughs> you've been studying this, Layla. What other words do you have for us? Okay, all right. I'll throw in a couple more. So, looking at 
Parliament. So, you know, Parliament, these are the people that represent us. So parler from the French parler to talk and meant from the Latin, I think it's mentior, meaning lies. <laughs> so that, that seems quite appropriate. <laughs> well, we all that is fact, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely fitting. One of the words that I've noticed, okay, is we have the word shit on the end of quite a few things. And even ourselves as we're growing our collective you know we're inviting women to come into our membership I'm thinking maybe we need to change that word because if you go back to what I said in the workshop workshop one which was about uh, the citizenship and on and the fact that we're all slaves on this massive citizenship and um, there's some other words that they have that end with the word ship so help me out women you may may have a few to mind so there's definitely membership uh citizenship as i said um i was thinking about it earlier but i've gone championship what Champ was that? championship relationship relationship there's a lot of um water related you know relating to the sea and i think that ties into the admiralty law and the um um the laws of the sea you know we're birthed so birth and you know birthing off ships in, in a port so that and also if you look if you look at um you know seamen sea men you know <laughs> men of the sea so it's like tying into that the laws of the laws of commerce the laws of admiralty the laws of piracy <laughs> so it sort of keeps on bringing us back to that it's funny how it all ties in it does all tie in so um you're gonna have to keep us going with these words then Layla please all right, I'll keep going until I run out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just this is not so much a word play, but it's just a definition. Different between a police man and then a, a man, a living being, and a police officer who represents a policy officer. So an administrative person of an office. So they're there to um, enforce um sort of contracts essentially a corporate employee you know using the acts of parliament so there's a differentiation there i think we've all just you know jumping if you you've got something to come back on we've discussed the understand so standing under someone's authority so you know using words like comprehend inner stand overstand make up your own words you know just be creative <laughs> I let's get <it>. welcome <laughs> susie hi susie we've been just hi we do it. This is an extension of last week's um, looking at how words have double meanings in the English language. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Layla's taken us through, I think, three words already. And uh, what was that last one that you were just saying there, Layla, please? The last one was understand. And oh, before that, yes. it was the difference between the um, policeman and police officer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with that, you know, I'm getting very good at using the word comprehend. I'm actually really enjoying that word and enjoy. I feel like it's got, got power in it when I'm saying, do you comprehend? I comprehend. So I'm, I'm saying it in my writing, in um, my spoken word. So yeah, I'm, I'm loving that word. I'm loving the sunshine. Susie's in the sunshine. <laughs> I've, only, I've, just, yeah, I've just got back from uh, taking the dog for a walk and he's in the garden. So I thought I might as well just, you know, uh, take advantage of it it's very nice isn't it it's beautiful a beautiful day. day and if anybody's noticed I'm in my swimming costume because I'm going for a swim it's not my first ever swim but it's Zenta's first ever swim he is two years old and it's the first time he's going to be in the pool I cannot believe it so uh, that'll, yeah. that'll be amazing that will I know I'm looking forward to it and it's a beautiful day but come on then Layla let's have some more of these words please okay okay well, let's see what I can come up right in uh, legal terms, the word must is synonymous with may. So when they say, you know, must or may, it's, those words can be interchangeable and, and mean either or. So that's something to, you know, pick up on. Layla, Again, before you, sorry, before you move on, what about this word mandatory? Because people really haven't got their head around that, have they? They saw that word and they fell for it. Let's be honest. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just goes back to um, a lot of the terminology that you, is used. It's with the impl implication that it's a demand or an order or something which is a require. you know, you have, you must do, you must comply with. Whereas most of these things are just invitations and they're only valid if you consent or give your um, 
okay, you know, comply with it essentially. So um, mandatory is not one I have the, the exact definition of, but the one I can, summons, when you get a summons, if you think of that as related to summons in the dead, <laughs> like a seance kind of thing. So we're coming back to that death terminology, but that is nothing more than an invitation. We're led to believe it's a demand from an authority of the court, but you know, it's just an invitation. And just if you decide to accept it and turn up. <laughs> so again, we're going back to the death culture, as you said. Um, so much of the language is related to that, you know, grieving, are you awake? You know, the words that we spoke about in our last session. So it's very interesting. And uh, yeah, summons, mm, I'll bear that in mind. Ooh, when they try and get me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, I don't want to come to your party. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should call our thing a member party. <laughs> Sorry. We should have an element of member celebration. Party. It? <laughs> That's a good one. So, yeah, and you, you, you are so good with words. So I just looked up the definition of mandatory, although it's more the um, dictionary definition. So obligatory. Ob Obligatory, <laughs> compulsory, authoritatively ordered, pertaining to, of the nature of, or containing a command. It contains a command. So it's more a demand, more than an actual thing, right? That's what I'm getting. And then when you break the word down, it's man, da, to, res. So I don't know how you can break that up to, to see it in a way that kind of says that isn't the case. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. you get from that. For me, I'm not familiar. I haven't looked into the breakdown of that word. I don't know if Vanessa knows more, but a good place to put that in would be in the etymology um, dictionary because it goes oh. down to the root, meaning, root meanings and you know the, the origin of the words and what their original definitions were. Usually it will go back to the, the Latin, but also a lot of the... Um, misdirection has occurred where they've transferred or translated words between the Latin and the Greek and you know those sort of old cultures and there's been just switches as, as it's progressed kind of thing so yeah. <laughs> but, I think what I found fascinating Layla was for you to add that link for that book because I found that although I didn't read it all there was some really good points about silence which I thought was really you know I haven't, I wrote a, a bit of it out, but I've not got it to hand, but that's really well worth, you know, sometimes we're silent because we believe um, it's best to be that way, but it's not. It, it actually lets you know a bit more about silence, which I found really interesting. Um, yeah, I think the person Sorry, you're before referring you move to on, the... can we just let the audience know about the book and we'll put the link in um, at the end of this recording as well? Yeah, I can't remember the title completely offhand, but it was words, the, the power and occult meanings of, of words by, I believe the author was Pal L. Chang. And it's, a, it's you know, it's, it's one of those books that goes- Magic of Words, I think it was, was it? The magic, the power, the magic power of words or yeah. something like that, but well worth delving into that. Yeah, I think the passage you were referring to there, Susie, was um, with regards to silence, that, it's, that there's an Arabic phrase as well, which says, um, silence is a term of agreement so if you don't object to it it's because you agree and accept what's there and, and I think that's yes, a lot what, true. yeah yes. a, lot of, a lot of how the occult or you know the powers that have wanted to be <laughs> and then that's have, when have you operated. don't realize yeah and you don't realize how you've been manipulated by the governments and the councils and whatever because the language they use is all the same I mean they talk about black magic in words but I, I don't know whether I believe in that or anything because I've you know, it's only since last week when we had that conversation that I felt really, you know, I was really drawn to mourning. I've been really watching myself not saying that. Um, yeah, and, and I find it fascinating. I think we need to keep using the words like magic and juice and gumption, but then there's a deeper meaning. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I just want to throw in a couple of extra ones which are sort of legal terms to, to, to sort of give people a bit more empowerment. So 
you have a driving license and you know if you're stopped you're you're asked if you're a driver but actually driver in its legal term means someone who is on the roads as part of their either employment or co contract or part of commerce so if you're in your you know private vehicle you're not actually a driver you're just traveling from one place to another if you then identify as being a driver then you put yourself into that category of needing to be licensed and all that other thing that seems to be thrown into that um legal requirement and, and <laughs> adding to that we should be saying a conveyancer as well so your vehicle is a conveyancer exactly that so you're traveling in your conveyance from point yeah i'm just traveling <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that there's something in the black law uh thing that says uh driving while you're in the black now that isn't actually about the color of the skin because somebody said that in another call this week and it's not it sounds worse than it actually is i can't remember what they said but I think it's it's like what one of you have just said about that word. Well, it was you, Layla, at the beginning. Um, you know, I've always said to my children, don't say that you're black because you're brown. I was like, what is the colour of my skin? I'm brown. So, you know, we have to challenge these words and these definitions at every level anyway. You know? Obviously, <laughs> just to throw, throw this in, it was hilarious in the 1950s when... Uh, people of uh, my ethnicity were called coloured. I mean, that was just laughable. So I'm so glad that that terminology is not used, but yeah. So would I be like off-white? <laughs> you're, you're like cream. <laughs> you're in, like, in fact, the three of you are creamy, aren't you? Creamy. I hate the word cream. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. And then I have to excuse myself because I always used to say half caste and my sons always say, mom, you're not allowed to say that anymore. Oh, what are you doing? And I thought, well, we are, we, you're half and half, aren't you? When it's like, it's mixed race now, mom. It's not, but you just go by what you were you're conditioned to believe when, when, when the lads were younger, you see, but I didn't realize you don't, but we don't realize these things, do we? We're quite, but as I said before, I don't know if you were here, Susie, that we have to accept everything has got to be unlearned and we're taking on oh, a new yeah. persona, Definitely. new identity. And as Layla said, you know, we can mix and match. So did I hear, because I think I was laughing, did you say that for us, we're going to call it a membership party? I love that. Did you say that? We're going to take, we'll, we'll take the ship out completely. Yeah, just a no, yeah. Party. Okay, <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit of a thing. So before we end today's session, let's just remind our viewers of the exciting workshop that we are working on. It's nearly ready for the full promotion. It's called Entrapment and Enslavement. You are going to get so much information in that session. And we are going to be inviting you to become a founding member in our membership party. I love it. Stop <laughs> using the word shit. You keep saying oh, shit. I was going to say shit. Oh, sorry, what was it? Member party. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, come on the inside with us. You know, you can get a great grips of our personalities by then. It's we might work on the name as well. <laughs> yeah, we're going to name, work on the name. We're going to work on the name. But what we're basically saying is, you know, the benefits of being on the inside of what we're doing is the community is fantastic. You're going to be more confident as you go through the comprehension of the information. As you put this information in practice in your life, you will be supported. You will be guided. And as I said, the information that we gather from experts is going to be absolutely mind blowing. So don't miss out. I'm looking forward to it anyway. <laughs> 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 so, my dears, let's have another four minutes of discussion and then we will wrap it up for today. I was just coming back to the word things. And it's something that Susie was touching on before, you know, how um she's used certain phrases and we, we are going to find some things are going to offend people some are not just based on their past experiences and how they link to certain words it's almost getting to a point where you feel you have to actually define a word you're using before you actually use it you know to be able to convey what it is you're trying to to mean so 
if anything, I'd say just be creative with your words now. Make it up. Make it make it what you want it to mean with your energy behind it. And, and let's just make it more, you, know, you know bring a bit of pizzazz into the language. <laughs> Lena, and remember to vibrate higher with those words. Vibrate <laughs> higher. Use yeah, that power. Definitely. Use that Any magic. Are uplifting. Uplifting. Yeah. But Leila, before we close, I just wanted to um, actually obviously say thank you to you for helping with the syntax grammar. But I actually went on to one of their calls this week. I need to forward it on to you. I didn't watch the full thing. But the whole point of Syntax Grammar, which we will have an episode on, so don't worry if you've not heard about Syntax Grammar before. But Syntax Grammar is all, all about almost putting things in the right order in the written passage. Because what they're saying is when you speak, how can you distinguish the facts from the fiction in speech? So when you write something down, you have to know what the facts are in the written word. So again, I mean, you've got a little bit of knowledge there as well, Layla. Is there something you just wanted to say on syntax grammar? And we'll definitely have that as a conversation in this series. Yeah, well, when I first learned of it and sort of looked into it a little, I'm no expert by any means, you know, but just in, in what I have researched myself is exactly that. It, 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 in how it was created, they look back through all the old dictionaries to the origins of words to find what a true statement was, as in how to define a fact. And that comes in the form of, if I remember correctly, for the something of the something with the something by the, and you then put the authority is being the action word in the middle, which is the one which is the creative word. But what it is, it's almost like a mathematical sentence structure in that you can rearrange any part of the word and put it in a reverse in order. And it still means the same thing. It doesn't lose its meaning. Therefore, you eliminate all that double speak and misspeak and, and misdirection that can usually be inserted into a phrase um, where people can take it to mean one thing when it actually has, you know, is intended to mean another. So, yeah, I, I just found it powerful in being able to establish the facts, especially when it comes to contracts where these things should have clear definitions so they can't be misinterpreted. But yeah, that, that, that's what I have on it. <laughs> you often say that with uh, the Quran that people misinterpret the Quran. What do, you, what do you think about that? Oh, absolutely. I think it just goes with language generally in that, you know, there's, there's phrases where you think of uh, jihad, holy war. People see that as a physical war against someone. Whereas I've always taken that to mean an internal war. It's, it's referring to the internal battle we have, you, you know. But I think that that's what we find, again, with language. There's many layers, there's many meanings, and it just depends on the perspective you wish to view it from. So. <laughs> Brilliant. And contract, okay. it's a con. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good one to end on, Susie. <laughs> so we are going to wrap up now. What I would like to say is for those of you who haven't yet um, actually really looked into what we're doing, the information is going to come round. And if you are already part of our party in the Telegram group, guess what? Layla has actually produced a, a magnificent resource guide. You know, she's taken it to the next level. It's called the 12 Shocking Presumptions of Court. Layla, 20 seconds, can you just summarise what they're going to expect in that one, please? Yeah, I, I found it quite an eye opener when I came across this and someone uncovered, you know, the old canon law, which is the ecclesiastic, uh, ecclesiastic I can't even pronounce it, but the, you know, the old church sort of rules that used to be in place. And it defines the 12 presumptions that the court actually makes. So these are what they hold to be true before you've even entered. So yeah <laughs> brace yourselves <laughs> brace yourselves so make sure you download that guide you will be getting a link to that if you're already in the telegram telegram group you'll be getting a link if you're not in our telegram group already why not make sure you get on the inside so we can tell you more information well it's been a fantastic session with my soul sisters my divine sisters we are so excited. Well, I'm excited. We're so excited about the next session. We've got so much more to give you. So thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you're here with us on the next session and also at the next workshop, which is the 12th of June. You take care and bye for now. Bye.